Hey Zips fans, Chad Welker here with the Zips Digital Network being joined by Jared Embick, the head men's soccer coach here at the University of Akron. First of all, coach, uh, thanks for taking some time out of your day. How are you doing? Uh, how's your family? And uh, give us a little update on uh, what you've been up to these past couple weeks. Yeah, we're doing great. Uh, just been uh, locked down in our own house. And, you know, Jamie's, uh, uh, my wife's able to work from home as well. So, you know, basically, uh, we split up the house. I'm in the basement. She's upstairs uh, in the dining room. And, you know, we're both just trying to get any work done we can. Uh, for me, it's been been trying to tie up some loose ends administratively, uh, anything with, with paperwork, um, checking in with the guys daily, and if they need anything from us from school, um, any support we can give them. And then for, for soccer-wise, you know, we've been just analyzing some videos, looking at some things, uh, see where we can kind of prove how we can get the guys to do certain things maybe next fall that can help us. When you when you talk about uh, staying updated to the guys, what is it like? How are you guys going about that? Are you and your coaches splitting like groups? Are you splitting position groups? Uh, how are you kind of organizing the co communication between you and your athletes? Yeah, we just kind of you know I ask my assistants just to kind of check in with guys, um, you know, semi regularly. I I pick a player every day and and just set up a call with them you know, Zoom, Skype, whatever, just check in. And, and you know, then we have about a, a weekly or biweekly team meeting on, on Zoom where we just kind of go over stuff, make sure everybody's on course, if there's any concerns, how we can help. So we, we kind of try to stay connected and we're encouraging the guys to kind of stay connected as well and, and build on what we, we started this spring. In regards to what you did start this spring, um, you were able to get a couple – uh, exhibition matches in what were some of the things that you saw that you liked and what are there some of the things that uh, you obviously are going to want to work through through the film process you know I think I think we saw a little bit better mentality and chemistry in the group um, you know we're still not finishing chances uh, the way we want but I think that has to do with a little bit of our confidence level right now so we just got to kind of work through it um, but we got to see some progress from some deaf players you know we have five guys out with uh, surgeries for the spring. So we got to see some guys like uh, Federico and Jaden Wright and some new guys like Ryan Combe and, and Jordan Seaman. Uh, some of those guys we got to get a good look at and see what they can bring to the table. But, uh, you know, I think, I think we got some good experience. You know, Declan was able to play two, two full 90 minute games. Um, we got to see a couple games from our goalkeepers, Grant and Cam that, nobody saw play in the fall. So I think from that standpoint, we have a good idea of what this roster can do. And, and then with the new guys, we, we have a good clear understanding where we want to go for the fall. All right, coach, we're going to uh, get into a couple Twitter questions here. Um, first, starting off uh, from Sean G uh, Zagorski. Uh, what is it like coaching the players at Akron, especially the ones that you know can go on and be professional, be a professional soccer. Oh, that's that's one of the best parts. Uh, you get to work with high level players, and you know those guys have a, a hunger for the game and desire to learn, and and you can push them and, and challenge them, and you know that that's a joy. So I, I really enjoy that. There's not many things you can't ask them to do that they're not willing to try, and uh, they put a lot of time and effort in their game. That's why they can make it to the next level. Uh, next one. Trying to go back and forth between two screens here. So next one, uh, are our foreign-based student-athletes safe and in good health? I know we have uh, posted some videos up of uh, a few of them, um, but when you get to talk to them kind of on a more regular basis, how's everybody? All of them are doing great. Um, you know, checked in with them. They're, they're doing well. They're in a little bit more quarantine than, than we are as they uh, can't even go out for a jog or anything like that. Um, so they've been making the most of it, but right now safe, healthy, uh, happy to be able to see some family back home. Um, this is coming from the same person talking about potentially new traditions of playing. You'll never walk alone prior to uh, matches before the guys take the pitch, uh, considering the state of the world and the state of the program. Uh, traditions, even borrowed ones, begin somewhere. 
uh, initial thoughts on, I mean, you know me, I'm a Liverpool guy. So um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on maybe creating a new you know, tradition? I think it's great to create new traditions. The, the thing with them is everybody's going to have to participate. So we try to do things like that. Then we need everybody to kind of step up and make it a good experience and, and continue to carry it every time we do it. Uh, if we can, then for me, the more the better. All right. Uh, next one is also from the uh, the same guy who's asked two questions before, but uh, what new training methods and tactics uh, will you – explore uh to improve defending corner yeah i think uh corner kick was maybe an issue last year um both ways i think scoring maybe more so than defending uh you, you know last year we went similar um until late in the year we went similar to what we did the year before which was uh one of our best years in defending corners um as i look at a Last year, I think it had a lot to do with, with maybe the goalkeeping position and, and how aggressive maybe those keepers were and um, some of our personnel, how we moved around it. So I think what we have to figure out is who our goalkeeper is first and then what he's capable of doing on, on corner kicks and, and set pieces. And then we got to make sure we balance out his weaknesses with the good strategy of the players in front. Uh, but, you know, that will be something that we'll have to work out in the fall is that the goalkeeping position is wide open. Uh, Fred Elliott chimes in. Uh, he says the team seemed to struggle with scoring in 2019, which seemed to frustrate them. What plans are in place to improve possession and the attack going forward? Yeah, what, what's interesting about last year is, um, you know, when you look at all the uh, analytics data, uh, we probably created as many chances or more than we did the previous two years. Um, you know, the years we made the final four, I think we finished our chances at, you know, 32 and 34% uh, conversion rates. Last year was 18%. Um, you know, you finished similar to years before, that's 18, 19 more goals. And I think the season looks a lot different. So I think, you know, for us, we're not, when you look at that data, we're not necessarily looking to change a whole lot, but I think we got to play to the strengths of the players that are in our best 11. Um, so that's what we've been looking at this spring, trying to analyze some video and some maybe new ways we can bring the ball out of the back, um, maybe some ways we can create more up top with the personnel we have and, and coming in. So those, those things will unveil a little bit in the fall. But, yeah, we definitely have put a lot of time and effort into trying to create and, and, and finish a little better than we did the last year. Now this question's kind of coming from me with this time that you've had uh, to kind of um, reflect on the 2019 season and now that you kind of have this time where you have this quarantine and it, how badly do you want to get back out on the pitch with your guys right now? Uh, I think everybody is, is just hungry to get back. At, you know, we want to get to work. We want to, you know, get back to our normal level and, and normal way of playing and, and you know last year has left a really bad taste and it's been a really long time that we've been going and, and this has just kind of added to that kind of anxiety to get the season going but uh, we, we want to get back there as soon as we're allowed. Fred also uh, asked in 2019 there seemed to be a lot of pa uh, backward passing and crossing the ball in front of our own goal seemingly spent more time on our half of the field uh, than the other teams than in the past. Any comments on this and plans going forward? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I mean, backwards passing has always been somewhat involved in our game. Um, sometimes you have to go backwards, draw the opponent out to move forward. I think in terms of playing in our own half versus the attacking half, yeah, that was, uh, you know, something that wasn't as clear. But, you know, when you look at our team, I think uh, – Ideally, when we went into the season, you know, a couple guys, you know, Sky Harder, Colin Byros, which were key to us moving the team, were both coming off off-season surgeries. And Sky never really was able to recover. He's, he's still uh, – he probably needed another two, three months um, to get back to full fitness and form. And as you can see, he hardly could play when he did. He was not his normal self. And Colin, the same thing. We had – our new guys weren't necessarily ready to step in right away 
at those levels. So we had to play, you know, those guys through some maybe pains and, and lack of fitness. And without that, that really hurt what we planned on going in, um, trying to build. So, you know, as you saw, we tried a lot of different lineups. And then eventually at the end of the year, we, we settled in on a, a lineup a little bit different than anybody plan going into the fall and then I think at the end of the year you saw us play a little bit more in opponent's half and play a little bit more our game but you know I think I think the beginning of the year had a lot to do with with some key guys um being injured um college soccer you got 9.9 scholarships so it's not necessarily possible to have maybe the depth and you know we have sky that's injured it's not necessarily we have a sky type player that's behind them you know those those are unique that's why those guys are are good players so you know I think that hurt us um you know we weren't able to find find a way through with the tough schedule to uh kind of survive that that kind of blow um you know and, and those things but it's something that we've looked to address in the off season in terms of depth and maybe an alternate way of playing at times to to be able to cope with some of those things you talk briefly about the uh schedule um and I know we haven't actually set out a big time release yet uh, of opponents this upcoming year, but how is the schedule kind of coming about uh, for the 2020 campaign? Well, well, it's always been a good schedule. I think right now with everything's going on, it, there's been some late changes as there's some travel concerns with not only us going certain places um, in terms of flights or, or opponents coming here. Um, so that's part of the reason why there's a delay as I think there'll be some movement with what's going on and some adjustments that have to be made across the country on some schedules. But, you know, typical, we'll always have some great home games and, and some tough road matches, um, you know, very balanced schedule. And I think this year will be a year that we have the experience to, to work through it and, and get ourselves in good position for the postseason. I also checked with uh, after the Bowling Green contest and then it, when West Virginia ended up winning the MAC championship, is there a gap that you feel could be closing in on Akron right now, even though you've got a consistent number of um, regular season and or uh, tournament championships? Is is are, is the conference closing the, the gap? on? Well, I think what happens when you have a, a team that, like ourselves that have been at the top of the conference um, for many years, you know, the other teams have, have a choice. They can lay down and just accept it or they have to continue to fight and adapt their ways and, and ask for more support. And I think you've seen the second is the teams have come back fighting. The, the coaches have done a great job of, you know, gathering support at their institutions to, to increase budgets or other resources they have. And they've come up with a good plan in terms of, recruiting and, and that's what you want that's why you move to to better conferences because those force you to step up I think you've seen our conference step up you know the additions of some of the new teams like West Virginia and SAUE have have helped um, but you know outside of this year um, the previous two years we were top four conference in the RPI and I think that that's credit to what the coaches have done and they've been able to beat a lot of good teams out of conference as well uh, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad our conference has really stepped up and, you know, as a, I think a top five conference in the country and, and, you know, those coaches have done a tremendous job bringing their programs forward. Next question we have from uh, Twitter from Joe Herbert is, uh, how have the current times affected your recruiting process? Yeah, it's, it's changed it. I mean, we can't, I think the biggest thing is you can't have uh, visits. So unofficial or official visits, so you can't get kids on campus to make early decisions or in some cases, maybe a late decision if they're a senior. Um, you know, nobody's playing soccer anywhere. So going and watching a game is, is irrelevant at this time. It's not possible. So you, you try to track down old video and, and watch. But, uh, you know, where it's really hurt is, is maybe, you know, your next class or your next two classes maybe – doing some homework evaluation, getting some people on campus, uh, you know, getting to learn about the kids a little bit that you don't know. I mean, this was a usually big evaluation period for current juniors or sophomores uh, for us that we're kind of missing out on. But, uh, you know, we'll survive. I think, I think there's worse times that could have happened in terms of recruiting for us. 
And then lastly, um, this come from Brian. Uh, how sh how should the college game evolve to better develop pro players, whether that be subs, clock, uh, wraparound schedule, D1 as part of a pyramid, uh, similar to Euro third, three fourth tier. Well, that's a good question. I think uh, ideally we could offer a lot in terms of that 18 to 21 year old range that I think throughout the world is a problem. Um, I think every pro club, their first instinct is to try to make a kid a pro by 18, 19. If they're not, well, what's the fallback plan for these kids? I think college can be a great place for that, especially if we change some rules. Uh, first thing I, I would like us to see to extend the season to fall and spring, um, give us time to, to develop players in between games. You know, I think when you're playing three games in eight days or seven days, you know, the emotional and mental strain on a kid can also slow down development. You know, when you can play week to week, then you can kind of evaluate a game, work with them individually a little bit more, build them back up and not maybe put as much stress and anxiety on them and pressure um, because you have to play in a game every three days. I think that's a key part because they're still, you know, developing socially and emotionally. So I think for us, if we can extend the year and, and give us a week to work and improve, I think that will help. I think the second phase of that, eventually we need to change the substitution rule, be closer to the pro game. It's, it's not the pro game, so I don't know if we have to go to three subs. Um, but, you know, I think something like five, five subs total, six subs total, I think those things could be – something that could be a value then now those guys have to learn to to play you have to as a coach you know if i only have five subs and no re-entry then my game plan and, and scouting and preparation has to be even better i can't maybe fix it mid-game or i can't do it with mass numbers of subs um i think from a coaching development that'll help but from a player how to how to manage that right how to work through a game 90 minutes um go through the ebbs and flows because uh you know, there's not as many subs to you available. So I'd like to see that as the second phase. The first is we, we need to get the full full season, fall and spring, I think, sorted. And then we can work on that. And then I think when you do that, I think you'll see a little bit more development, a little bit more continuity, um, maybe a little bit easier evaluation for the pro teams to make as well as, as which guys are ready to make the next step. Coach, I uh, want to go on a kind of a, a look back into the career you've had here at the University of Akron. Uh, hopefully this can kind of be fun. Earlier this week, uh, we put out that decade team. Um, how It was it was very fan-friendly, very fan-created. Uh, how do you assess the, uh, the grades of those guys who made that decade team? Do you think there's anybody that should have been on there that was kind of missing – uh, kind of your take on on what happened with that with that uh, uh, involvement of our fans. Well, look, everyone that made it is a very good player. I think uh, you know we've been fortunate. We've had many good players, and there's a lot of good players that are not on that team that that could be very deserving. I think depending on who you are, how how you like those teams that you've watched, and and that you could easily have a different team. I think the most difficult part of that selection is that, you know, you have some talented players that play the same position that in that setting, you can only pick one. Um, for me, I don't know if I could pick a team. I think I could pick two or three teams and be extremely happy, probably even four. Um, you know, I don't want to take anything away from guys that have been picked or not picked. I think that's a, a personal preference of, of who you enjoy when you watch. But, you know, I think the team that was picked would be a very good team. I'd love to, to coach it. And I know there's a couple teams that people would come up with that aren't picked that would be as good and be a fun match. And uh, unfortunately, we don't get to get those guys together and play the match. But, uh, you know, I think from my time here, it's great to say that, look, we have maybe some guys that are left off that should be on. I think that means we've done our job as a program and fans have been blessed to watch many good players come through and wear, wear the colors. From the standpoint of one of your more memorable moments as a coach here at Akron, um, is there a – I know we, you and I kind of did this a couple years ago, but uh, is there a game or is there a goal that just always will stick with you that, um, you know, 
was so impressive by one of your guys? Like, man, I'm coaching one of those guys. Um, you know, I think I think my favorite game was when I was an assistant when we played Kyle in the Elite Eight. Um, I think that was a really fun game. I think uh, Stanford um, on the road where we beat them three two in the Elite Eight was a fun game. Uh, you know, then you had uh, Creighton at home in 15 where we went on Najem's free kick. Um, that was, uh, I think, a memorable game. There's many plays that stand out. I mean, I think for me, maybe, um, was it 2016 uh, opening weekend where, um, you know, I think we beat Georgetown. It could have been Seattle, but Najem's assist to Tyler Sander for a game-winning goal late, late in the game. I think his play – you know, Adam's play in that was was really special, one of the better plays I've seen. Um, you obviously can go through Darlington and David Egbo and many other players, but I think uh, how he pulled that play off was always a, a special, special play one that uh, as I watch on video, I'm, I'm still impressed to this day on how that happened. I think that's a play that stands out to me. Um, team goal, obviously Stanford in the lead eight, I think, as a team of philosophy and what we've always stood for here. I think that kind of embodied us and in our style and everyone played a part in that goal. And it was a beautiful goal. What a coach wants is that it doesn't matter if it's three passes, five passes or 34 passes, what you want is a tap in at the end of the day um, that you can't miss. And to do that with that much pressure that late in the game, I think is an unbelievable testament to those guys that, that were on the field in our program. Coach, last question I got for you. Uh, it's kind of off the soccer topic, uh, but what have you uh, been able to do at home currently to uh, have some fun that might not necessarily involve soccer, Netflix and Hulu? Uh, you watching any good uh, good shows and what has kind of been something you've been following along the way these past uh, few weeks? Well, I've... I've uh cook maybe four different type of meals that I, I'm pretty proud of how they turned out. Um, you know, found a couple new recipes to try. So I think that allowed me to, to kind of put a few more recipes to press my wife in, in my repertoire. Um, you know, in terms of Netflix, I think we, we watched, um, I think we, we picked up Money Heist. You know, I'm trying to work on my Spanish. So we've been watching, watching that. That's been, uh, occupying us we're still not finished with it but uh we started it that's something new that that we've tried on netflix other than that it's uh we haven't actually watched as much tv as maybe maybe we thought we would coach appreciate the time thanks for uh joining me today and uh again stay safe i uh, hope the rest of your family is doing well uh and we'll hope to talk to you a little bit more uh as we lead up into the 2020 uh, campaign this summer. All right. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. You guys stay safe and uh, have a good day. Go Zips.